Now, it's good that you put in some numbers, and also you avoided a, a trap here. Here we numbered these as the number one and the number two. It would be tempting to think then that the number one and the number two were, say, on the left of this product. But it seems much more likely that these are the number one and number two on the right. There's no reason why the number one and number two have to be in the same position, so to speak, on the blackboard. So this seems like a good guess that this is the number one and the number two over here. Now you try to use the squiggle technique. Let's start over here. Let's squiggle which of these bonds in the product did not appear in the starting material. Which of the bonds in the product does not appear in the starting material? The bond between three and the oxygen. That's right. I think that originally you had squiggled the bond between the oxygen and the number two, but that bond already appeared in the starting material, so that's not a bond that we need to be forming. That already appears. Remember that in the product, we wouldn't need to squiggle the bond that needs to be made. Well, we don't want to form the bond between two and O, because that already exists over here. This is the bond that we want to squiggle here. And that might help us now to figure out the reagent that we need to add to get this reaction to happen. Looking at the starting material then here, are there any bonds in the starting material that we need to break to make the product? Are there any bonds no. in this? No. Yeah. This is where I went wrong. That's right. Originally, you had squiggled the two and the oxygen bond. But if we look at our product, we don't want to break that bond. We want to keep that bond. So in this case, there's no bond that we need to break over here. But we need to form a bond between the oxygen and the number three. Now you need to figure out a reagent that you can add that would allow us to form the bond between the oxygen and the number three. Sounds good, because what type of functional group are we trying to form? An ether. An ether. Well, we've learned one way to do that, which is the Williamson ether synthesis. Now, the Williamson ether synthesis, what are the two types of functional groups that we need to start a Williamson ether synthesis? Um. What are the two starting materials that we need for a Williamson ether synthesis? Uh, you need uh, alk uh, alk oxide and a halo alkane. That's right. Well, we've already got the alk oxide. So you're correct that we need to add a halo alkane. And if we use the numbers, we should be able to draw the right structure of halo alkane that we need. Okay. I know where like, it goes. We're going to put a, a, an iodide or bromine mm -hmm. on, uh, on three. Good. But I'm having just a hard time articulating that in my drawing. OK. Well, remember that we're trying to write down a good starting material to that, uh, a good reagent to add to this. Now, we know we want to add a halo alkane, so we could use, say, iodine or a bromine or a chlorine, whichever we like. Maybe we'll use a bromine. Now, who do we need the bromine to be attached to? So I guess we, it doesn't matter where we put it in our picture. We just put it in Where we put this in our picture? Yeah. yeah. Well, so far, we're just doing thought process anyway. Okay. So far, we're just doing a thought process. Um, but maybe this is a good place to put it because we're going to want to show these reacting okay. with each other. Was that the only question you had? Just where to draw it? Yeah. I okay. That was what was confusing me. In the uh, bromide would be connected to the number three, mm -hmm. the three to the four, four to the five, and then the six to the five, and the seven to the five. Correct. Good. You drew this as your starting material over here. That's fine. I should say you drew this. And now, in a sense, we're done. Our job was to come up with a reagent that we could add to the starting material to get the product. If we think that this is the right reagent, we can just circle this and say this is the answer. Now we should try to confirm that the reaction will really happen the way we want, so let's draw the mechanism. What would be the mechanism between the starting material and this product? There's no real need to recopy everything. You can just draw an arrow between the starting material and the product. Now you're getting a little confused because you're drawing this arrow. You're drawing an arrow like this. Oops. But we don't want the starting material to attack the product. Yeah. You want it to make the product. This we want one of the starting materials to attack the other starting material. Right. You were asking, where should we draw this? Well, the only important thing is it's better to draw it further to the left to show that it's a starting material. 
well, let's make sure this reaction would happen this way. Which row are we in in our table? Um, we are in the uh, second. The primary row? Good. And which column? Uh, the non bulky base column. Right. And that predicts what type of mechanism? SN2. Which is what we wanted here. So it looks like this is the correct answer. It was good that you put the numbers in the starting material and the product. And it was good that you guessed that the number one and two in the starting material corresponded to these carbons. Then what gave you trouble was putting the squiggles in the wrong place. In the product, we want to squiggle the bonds that are forming. But okay. well, we're not trying to form this bond. We're trying to form the bond between the oxygen and the number three. And in this case, we didn't squiggle anything in the starting material because in the starting material, we squiggle the bonds that are breaking. But by comparing numbers, we can see we don't need to break any bonds in this starting material. That's because we're not going to use this as the electrophile. We're going to use this as the nucleophile. So this doesn't have any leaving groups. The nucleophile doesn't have a leaving group. It's the electrophile that has the leaving group. So putting the squiggles in the right place was the biggest obstacle on this problem. In the future, something that might have helped us here is it's often helpful to try to write your starting materials as intermediate so they look as much like the product as possible. So for example, maybe we would have been better off here at the very beginning rewriting our starting material like this. Mm. That way it just looks more like the product over here. And for, by, uh, by the same token, maybe it would have been better if we had written the reagent that we're adding like this. We might as well try to make it look as much like the product as possible because these problems are confusing enough already. It's a little less confusing to try to draw the, all the structures so they're similar to each other. This problem was a little bit different than the one I gave you before because in the previous problem I gave you the halo alkane and you had to think to come up with the alkoxide. And in this problem I gave you the alkoxide and it was your job to come up with the halo alkane. Strong the mechanism in the product here. Right. 